Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio, myself Ruchi Dube, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, University of Allahabad. The topic for today's discussion is implication of stages of development and role of teachers. As we all know that the major stages of development are infancy, childhood and adolescence. Each stage of development has its own characteristics and educational implication. We will be dealing each of the stages in detail now. The first stage is the infancy. Infancy begins from birth and it continues till six years. Infancy is very important from the point of view of education because the education of a child begins from this period only. I am not talking about the formal education, but the informal education that is given to the child at home begins in infancy only. According to Valentine, infancy is the ideal period for learning. Watson said that during infancy, the scope and intensity of learning is very broad as compared to the other stages. While planning for education during infancy, it is necessary and significant to take into consideration the developmental characteristics of this period. In order to plan the education during infancy, it is very essential to understand the developmental characteristics of this period. The characteristics of development during infancy includes rapidity in physical development. This means that the physical development of the infant takes place at a very fast pace. During infancy, there is rapidity in mental potentialities. There is rapidity in learning, there is language development, perceptual development, emotional development, tendency of repetition, curiosity. The infants are very curious in nature. They always want to know why the things are happening. They always have the question, why, how? Another characteristic of infancy is dependence on others. The infants are always dependent on others for their needs. Then, feeling of self-love is there during infancy. Another thing is development of social feeling, instinctive behavior and lack of morality. Now, on the basis of these developmental characteristics, we will discuss the educational implications of infancy and the role of teachers. The first point is proper environment. For proper development of the child, healthy, peaceful and safe environment is essential. Therefore, both the home and the school environment must be healthy, safe and peaceful. Here environment means both the physical environment as well as the social environment. Next point is nurture. During infancy, physical development is important because it is the base for other aspects of development. Balanced diet and healthy physical environment is required for proper physical development. Another point for educational implication here is affectionate behavior. During infancy, the child is dependent on others for satisfaction of his needs. Therefore, the parents and the teachers should be affectionate while dealing with them. Satisfaction of curiosity. As I told you that infants are very curious in nature. They always have questions. They ask various questions regarding why it is happening, how it is happening. So, they ask these questions in order to satisfy their curiosity. Thus, parents and teachers as well as the other family members 
should try the level best to give answers to their question and satisfy their curiosity. Another thing is development of sociability. Child becomes sociable at the end of the infancy stage. He likes to play with other children and in order to develop the feeling of sociability, parents, family members and teachers must provide them ample opportunities to meet and play with other children so that they can become more sociable in nature. Opportunity for mental development. During infancy, there is a rapid development of mental abilities. Therefore, more and more opportunities needs to be provided to the infants to understand, think and to do mental work so that their maximum mental development can take place. And in this, both the teachers and the parents can play a very important role. Another point of implication of infancy stage is opportunity for conversation. As I already told you that one of the developmental characteristic of infancy is language development. That is language development of a child takes place during infancy. So for proper language development of the child, ample conversation opportunity should be provided to the children. For this, parents, teachers must narrate poems or stories to the children. Simple conversation can be done with them in order to develop their language ability. Another point is formation of good habits. Every possible efforts must be made to develop good habits among children. Attention on individual differences. No two childs are alike. Every child is different from the other child due to the existence of individual differences. So, while providing education, individual differences must be taken into consideration by the teacher. Importance of learning by doing. Infants are very active. They are always interested in playing and doing some work or the other. So, opportunities for learning by doing should be provided to them so that they can learn the things easily because when they do something they'll get an experience and whatever a child learns through his experience go throughout his life another thing is that education should be provided by the playway method children learn best when they learn through playway method when there is no pressure on them that they are learning another thing is Children in infancy love to get reward. Reward and praise must be given for their good work in order to maintain their motivation level. During infancy, the medium of instruction should be the mother tongue. And the mother tongue should be used as a medium of instruction both by the teachers as well as by the parents for better comprehension of the student. Now we come to the next stage of development that is the childhood. The childhood begins after the infancy stage that is after 6 years and it continues till 12 years. It is considered as the basis for the whole life. During childhood values, ideals and point of views are formed. The developmental characteristic of the childhood is taken into consideration while planning education in this period. Developmental characteristics of childhood are personal and social behavior is learned, habits are developed, behavior, interest etc. also develops. There is stability in physical and mental growth, increase in mental abilities, emotional development, curiosity is there. Uh, in during childhood, there is a feeling of self-dependence among the children. They are more interested in constructive work. And during childhood, social and moral qualities also develop. And another thing is, there is change in interest. 
educational implications and role of teachers. Attention on physical development. As Aristotle said, healthy mind resides in a healthy body. Therefore, for proper mental development in this stage, physical development is emphasized. And for proper physical development, balanced and nutritional diet must be provided to the children. Ample opportunities for games, exercises must be provided to the students in school. Education based on child psychology. Education during childhood must be planned on the basis of child's interest and needs. So, while planning the whole education, it should be based upon the interest and needs of the child. That is, it should be totally based on the child psychology. Education through play and activity. In the period of childhood, education must be provided through playway method and by various activities. Because through activity and the playway methods, children can learn new things easily. Emphasis on language development. Language development takes place during childhood. So, it should be emphasized uh, while planning education also. For this, the children should be given opportunity for conversation, storytelling, reading books, taking part in debates, speech, writing an essay, etc. Moral development of a child takes place during childhood. Moral development means conduct of moral behavior. So, moral education should be provided in schools. Teachers must tell the children moral stories in order to achieve their moral development. Satisfaction of curiosity. As I told you that one of the characteristic of childhood is that the children are very curious in nature. So, the parents and the teachers must try to satisfy the curiosity of children. They should try to give answers to the question of the students. Next point is interesting content. The subject matter and content to be taught to the students must be according to their needs and interest of the child. Childhood is characterized by diverse interests. That is, children have various interests and the interest keeps on changing during the childhood. So, interest of the children keeps on changing. So, the curriculum should be such that it should cater to the diverse needs and interests of the students. Opportunity for constructive work. Children should be engaged in various constructive works, both in home and school. Every possible effort should be made to develop their creative abilities. Development of social qualities. During childhood, social development also takes place of the child. So, the child social development needs to be emphasized. During childhood, socialization of the child starts. The child starts interacting with the friends and teachers. Thus, so, such activities must be organized in school by the teachers through which social qualities of discipline, self-control, responsibility, cooperation, sympathy may be developed among the children. Emphasis on mental development. Proper environment must be provided to the children during childhood for their mental development. That is, such environment must be given to them in school, which helps them to develop their perceptual ability, their memory ability, their thinking, their reasoning, etc. Now, we come to the next stage, that is the adolescence. It is the most important, sensitive and tough period in the life of a child. Stanley Hall called this a period of stress and storm. In this period, revolutionary changes takes place in physical mental and emotional aspects of the child. Adolescence is very important from the point of view of education also. Education during adolescence must be planned on the basis of its developmental characteristics. 
the developmental characteristics of adolescents are lack of stability, adjustment problem is there, there is difference in behavior, change in interest, maturity of sexual instinct, importance of friends and groups, feelings of independence and revolt, faith in God and religion, feeling of hero worship, self-respect, delinquency and anxiety for vocation. Now we will be discussing the educational implications of adolescence period and what is the role of the teacher in it. First is education for physical development. During adolescence, major physical changes takes place. Therefore, arrangement must be made for physical exercises, balanced diet and health education of the adolescents. Next is education for mental development. For proper mental development during adolescence, training for logical thinking, reasoning, problem solving must be arranged for the students by the teachers. Education for emotional development. Emotions do not remain stable in this period. The emotions of adolescence keeps on changing. They have various ups and downs of emotion during adolescence. Education in this period should be such that it channelizes their negative emotion in positive direction. Teachers should try to nurture emotional intelligence among the students. Emotional intelligence is a new term. Actually, emotional intelligence is the ability to understand, manage and control one's own emotion as well as the emotion of others. So, the teacher should try her level best to develop emotional intelligence among students and this can be done through various activities like role playing, dramatization and by adding emotional intelligence related content in the curriculum. Next thing is moral education. Adolescents suffer from identity crisis. They are unable to discriminate between right and wrong. So, religious and moral education should be provided to them in this period in order to, to help them to achieve moral development. Education for individual differences. No two childs are alike as I already told you. They differ in various aspects. So, education should be arranged taking into consideration the individual differences of the students during adolescence also. Curriculum should be organized in such a way by the teacher that it caters to the diverse needs and interests of the students. Next point is educational and vocational guidance. In schools, guidance services needs to be organized in order to help the students to solve their personal, educational and vocational problems. Teacher's role here should be of a counsellor also. Another point is sex education. During adolescence, sex education must also be provided to the students. Next is use of proper teaching methods. While teaching adolescents, the teacher should use appropriate teaching method. They should not only concentrate on lecture method, but they should use a teaching method according to the subject being taught because different subjects require different methods of teaching. So, we can say that the teacher plays a very important role in the life of the students in all the stages. In general, teachers must take into consideration the developmental characteristics of different stages and principles of development while planning the teaching learning process and while dealing with the students. So, in a nutshell, we can say that the educational implication of different stages of development may be as follows. First thing is, proper environment must be provided in schools. Students should be encouraged to express their feelings. Security and independence should be given at home and school. Teachers must match the level of teaching according to the level of development of the students. 
proper opportunities to the children must be provided to participate in games, cultural activities, etc. for their physical, social, emotional development and for the all-round development of the personality. Democratic outlook must be adopted while dealing with the children. Children should be treated calmly and intelligently when they show emotional outburst. Individuality of the growing child should be respected and faith should be expressed in children. The teacher must plan the learning procedure according to the developmental pattern that is they should proceed from general to specific, from known to unknown. Desirable behavior of the child must be reinforced. Experimentation and reading opportunity should be provided to the children. Emotions should be properly trained. Emotional energy should be properly directed in useful and socially approved channels. Interest in crafts and hobbies should be developed to channelize their emotions. Teachers must take into consideration the principle of individual differences and each child should be helped in the developmental process within the sphere of his own strength and limitation. So, by taking help of these implications, the teacher can help in the proper development of the students. So, learners, today we had learned about the implication of the various stages of development and the role of the teacher. And in a nutshell, it can be said that if a teacher will take help of these implications, that is, if a teacher will take into consideration the developmental characteristics of the different stages, then he can provide a better developmental opportunities to the students. Thank you.